Hello, my name is Kedar. You have been in the Matrix for several hundred years. I'm going to attempt to help you survive, but you must listen very carefully if you intend to escape the Matrix of the Wishing Game. To those of strong faith, to the loyal churchgoers, those that turn social networks into Sunday service, how's this working for you? What are you accomplishing besides building bigger churches? Why are you doing so poorly despite your claims about how much God loves you? And despite all the loyalty and commitment to your God, why do you have the poorest health in the nation? And if your God is so powerful, why are you so powerless? Where are your supermarkets, software companies, gas stations, hotels and warehouses? Marcus Garvey asked these same questions nearly a hundred years ago. Did you ever stop to think that there might just be a connection between your high praise and low productivity? If praise, worship, prayer, love of Jesus and giving God the glory were beneficial, where exactly are you benefiting? Why are you on the bottom of the food chain and getting the leftovers of society? Seriously, have you ever really thought about all of this? Do you make excuses for your faith like saying, God is just testing me, or my faith is not strong enough, or this is just God's will? We're living in the age of information, and it's time to get informed. The first problem is believing in tales that have nothing to do with you. Adam and Eve created as adults in a garden with an instant language are not explanations, only claims. Evolution, however, is an explanation. Human beings are species of animal, just like millions of other known species. Although we walk upright, we are nevertheless mammals and primates. Like all social animals, humans establish hierarchies. Humans have the same goal as other animals, and that's to eat and not get eaten. But who's trying to eat you, you ask? There are predators all around us and we deal with them every day. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world in which we live. And if you're not able to adapt, you will be eaten. There is absolutely nothing that goes on in the jungle of the Serengeti that does not happen on Wall Street. Capitalism, simply put, is just a game of survival. We are products of evolution. It's about adapting and passing along our genes. Those who do not play by the predator's rules will be eaten and will not get the opportunity to pass along their genes. In the concrete jungle, words and phrases like unfair, not right, or immoral in defense of one's treatment is the language of the conquered, the weak, and of the victim. You are on the bottom of the food chain. Racism, in reality, is only a group's desperate attempt to keep themselves elevated on the ladder of the human food chain. Again, at the end of the day, it's all about survival. Newsflash, you cannot pray your way up the ladder of the human food chain. Like all other animals, you cannot pray your way out of being eaten. Praying will not work in the grass jungle and it will not work in the concrete jungle. There is a pecking order amongst all social animals. So what is it that separates humans from other species? Among many other things, it's the ability to create entities. An entity is something that exists by itself, although it need not be of material existence. An entity has a distinct existence independent of other things. Apple, General Motors, Exxon Mobil, Walmart, IBM, and AT&T are examples of some of the largest entities in the world. But brand entities exist independently of their conceivers. They are not the person or persons that conceived the entity. Entities are conceptually real. The one thing all entities have in common are mission statements. A mission statement describes the reason and purpose an entity exists. Mission statements define whom your primary people are in your entity, the products and services the entity provides, as well as the geographical location where the entity operates. You may be wondering what all this has to do with the God you serve. 
The same God who let you suffer in slavery for hundreds of years. The same God that allowed your homeland to be stolen, your children to be sold, and who now allows a million of your men to be locked up in a system designed by predators who continue to eat you. The wishing game you have been made to believe in is a prison. You were born into a mental bondage, into an entity that you cannot taste or see or touch. God is an entity. This may sound strange to you, but God is a global brand entity, just like other global brand entities. The God entity is conceived, exists independently from its conceivers, and is not of material, and like other large entities, makes substantial livings for those who conceived it. It is delusional to think that there is a God watching over starving children or helping individuals find jobs or making sure that your favorite team wins the game. So if God is an entity, then what is this entity's mission statement? It's the Bible. And here's an example of how this God entity and mission statement can impact the world. In ancient times, nomadic Jews were greatly discriminated against. The nomadic Jews were expelled from many parts of the world tired of moving from place to place and in desperate need of a permanent settlement, the nomads conceived of a God entity who they named Yahweh. Conceived by nomadic Jews, this angry, intolerant God entity named Yahweh was thought of in order to instill fear in those who would mistreat his favorite people, the nomadic Jews who made up the story. Yahweh's mission statement was the first five books of the Bible known as the Torah. The purpose of the nomadic Jews mission statement was to get them a homeland. The product was fear and the geographical location where it was all staged to play out or operate was an area commonly referred to as the Middle East. The primary people as outlined in the mission statement were Abraham, Moses, David, and Joshua. If enough time passes, Myths can eventually merge into reality, and the God entity and mission statement conceived by the nomadic Jews help provide them with the homeland called Israel. The same is true of the non-material God entity Jesus conceived by the Roman government and the Roman Catholic Church. The God entity named Jesus gained enormous wealth for the Roman Catholic Church. The mission statement of this God entity was the New Testament. The purpose was to subdue the Roman Jewish war and stop the spreading of Judaism. The product was salvation and the geographical location where this entity was to operate was in Roman Judea. Those who did not accept Christianity were put to death and their properties were confiscated. And to this day you are afraid not to believe in this God entity and not to adhere to its mission statement. Yahweh, Jesus, and even Allah are global brand business entities designed to serve in the interest of the members who conceived them and wrote their mission statements. No actual God has ever fought in any battles, lost any limbs, or suffered any casualties. The reason you are on the bottom of the human food chain is because you use prayer as your first line of defense and because you are trying to hitchhike a ride on a God entity that was not conceived by you. You were not the primary people in the mission statement, therefore were never entitled to receive any of its benefits. You are like a character in the wrong movie. You are following a script not conceived by you. It is like rubbing on a lantern without a genie inside. It is like trying to tune into a channel that does not provide service to your people. Your only chance of survival is to compete intelligently and rationally, giving more.